evidence of this, sometimes with tragic results. ไอ้ลุงนี่เนี่ยบ้านมันไม่ดีเลยอเภทเมรีอย่าตาไว้ไปเนาะวิตุเมมาซอเจนเนาะตะขามะไม่มีบูดาเมตุเมมาชวาเ
did you come down? And just use the uh, banister support. Yeah, just put, follow me. If you fall, I'll stop. Foot, you. And then you roll your skirt up. These tourists are unaware that the local people they meet risk imprisonment if they speak too freely to them. Our soldiers, says the Minister of Tourism, are here to protect you. The British built this guest house around the time that Rudyard Kipling was writing The Road to Mandalay. I wonder if he'd recognize the Burma of his dreams today. According to the regime in the year of the tourist, and I quote, roads will be wider, lights will be brighter, grass will be greener, and tours will be cleaner. Pick up a travel brochure these days from any of the famous names, British Airways, Kuoni, Orient Express, and you would be pardoned for thinking that the same Ministry of Propaganda supplied the copy. For example, to find an unspoilt country today may seem impossible, but Burma is such a place. Indeed, Rangoon means end of strife. It's easy to see why. Its easygoing ways are a tonic to the Western traveller. It's a tonic that doesn't come cheap in one of the world's poorest countries. A cruise up the Irrawaddy to Mandalay will cost you more than £2,000 for just 11 days. However, there is a Kipling piano bar, and it says here, ensuite cabins that are not just simply luxurious, but include the latest satellite TV, video, and your own personal safe. And in the evenings, gentlemen will feel relaxed in a jacket and tie and ladies in a dress. What sound advice. And that's not all. There's a free lecture on Burma's history and culture. But you don't get this in the lecture. These are prisoners restoring the moat of the Imperial Palace in Mandalay in preparation for the year of the tourist. The regime says they are criminals in a country where writing a poem or singing a song calling for democracy can get you ten years' hard labour. And here is the moat, finished. All it needs is tourists. Brian Whittaker, an Australian lawyer, witnessed slave labour when he and his wife Jacqueline flew into a new tourist airport in the north of Burma. We heard the clinking of chains and uh, we went outside and noticed about 30 people crushing rock by hand and one of them raised his prison uniform at the legs to display manacles which were running across his ankles. He then quietly lifted his shirt which showed a chain around his waist and from my memory he also had a manacle around his neck and one of the officials uh, informed us that the prisoners were political prisoners. He told you they were political prisoners? Yes, he yeah. very explicitly said that they were political prisoners. The Burmese government uh, have said, uh, when questioned about this by human rights organisations, that this is a traditional voluntary form of labour. That's rubbish. It's, it was clearly not voluntary. You don't volunteer to crush rock <laughs> dressed in threadbare uniform in the freezing cold with chains uh, all over your body and standing under guard. I'm familiar with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and I believe that what I observed was a clear breach of the provisions and the articles relating to uh, forcible work and slavery. Forced labour goes on all over the country but a lot of these projects are aimed at the tourist trade, the tourist industry. They are meant for tourists building roads, building bridges. So we do not think that it's a good idea to promote Visit Myanmar 1996, which is not to say that tourists should stay away forever from Burma. After all, Burma will always be here. And one day when it's a democratic Burma, I think it will be a place that tourists will enjoy visiting and they need not have any qualms about visiting it. These prisoners are preparing a tourist attraction in Mandalay. The actual road to Mandalay has recently been converted to an expressway. For the local people forced to work on it, it's known as the road of no return. According to Amnesty, two workers who tried to escape were executed by soldiers on the spot. 
One was hacked to death. Mr Sherwood, last year uh, your company signed a deal for $35 million with the Burmese regime. What does that involve? Well, it's basically an investment in uh, ships and shore facilities for the development of river uh, tourism in Burma. Did you consider all the implications of Burma's rather appalling record as far as human rights are concerned before you went in with this project? Well, I, I did, and I've uh, tried to investigate uh, these allegations about human rights infringements, it's very hard to, uh, to pin them down. People make these accusations or allegations. Mm. I immediately try to see if there's any proof uh, to them. I can't find it, but of course I accept that I uh, cannot visit all of Burma and I, uh, my uh, visits are limited to the principal cities, so, uh, so perhaps that's uh, um, I, out of sight, out of mind uh, attitude, yeah. so I, I can't I can't speak any further than my personal knowledge. Did you make really any attempt before you invested in Burma to see this other side? Well, what I did do was that I uh, contacted uh, the senior CIA uh, representative uh, uh, for Burma and um, uh, had the extensive discussions about the truth of all of these allegations. And he confirmed to me that uh, uh, that they were all untrue or that to the degree that they occurred they were related to the drugs war. So um, they're, not, the, they're not allegations. I mean here they, I mean you would think that the United Nations Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, uh, uh, the United States government, the United States State Department says for instance forced labor is routine in Burma. Um, I don't think these all come into the realm of allegations. There's well, a great deal of substance there, surely. Well, perhaps you, you can say so, but I don't have any personal evidence of it. I, um, Did you see the, the elected leader of the country, Aung San Suu Kyi, when you were there? No, I didn't, no. I think it would uh, be inappropriate or uh, untactful for us to uh, uh, open a dialogue with, uh, with the opposition leader. Uh, but mean, she's the elected all, leader. Um, some would say that the people, uh, uh, the generals that you saw are the opposition. Well, I, I believe that the generals are in power. <laughs> the general's power is backed by foreign money. One estimate is that since it crushed democracy in 1990, the Burmese regime has drawn 65% of its financial support from oil companies. The main backers are the French company Total and its American partner, Unical. The oil pipeline they are building in the south of Burma will allow the generals to sell the country's natural gas to Thailand. The deal will give them an estimated $400 million a year over 30 years. And the British are back. Last December, a London Chamber of Commerce seminar was told about the real visionaries in the Burmese government. And in the House of Commons, the Foreign Office Minister, Jeremy Hanley, made this remarkable statement. Through commercial contacts with democratic nations such as Britain, the Burmese people will gain experience of democratic principles. Of course, just as the peoples of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Indonesia, and all the other modern tyrannies have gained experience of the democratic virtues of British business. If the opposite wasn't true, this would be funny. We repeatedly asked ministers at the Foreign Office and the Department of Trade in London to be interviewed for this film, but they refused. So did the Burmese embassy. We can reveal that one British company that did trade with the Rangoon regime was the arms company BMARC. BMARC was a subsidiary of Astra, whose chairman was Gerald James. It became apparent uh, as we investigated BMARC's affairs uh, after we took it over that they were running a secret order book mm -hmm. and also conducting other covert operations on behalf of the intelligence community. What evidence do you have that, um, that BMARC did ship arms to Burma? 
Well, here, here you have a list with several countries on.